Welcome to Castler Paint. My name is Ian, and today we're going to be painting a miniature art piece. This is our first video, so we're going to be playing it safe, and we're going to be painting a space marine. Kinda. The first step along this road is of course finding inspiration. Since we are fans of 3D printing, I go straight online to see what files can be found. Check in all the normal places, there is a plethora of amazing miniatures that spark interest, but today we are going to paint a space marine. I checked over the Games Workshop website, but on the cusp of ordering something, I remembered a specific Patreon that sometimes makes one-off STLs for interesting characters in the Warhammer universe. Behold Lehman Russ the Great Wolf and Primarch of the Vika Fenrikia. He is kind of a space marine and an amazing miniature, so it's a good place to start. A quick addition of supports, a short slice, and he can now be printed. Cue the angelic music. Here he is, printed and ready to be brought to life. Let's get some basic paint layers onto him before we go back to working on the rest of the piece. We need to find a good reference image for what we want the paint job to emulate. Google's our best friend, so we search for Lehman Russ and see what we can find. This image here is perfect. It's one of the big moments in the Horus Heresy for Lehman Russ, and we can see him here right at the front. From this image, you can see how his armor should look. We're gonna try and emulate this as much as we can. Let's get started. From this shot, you can see I have maybe one or two blues or greys. The armor should be mostly grey, but the Lord of Winter needs a blue tinge to his armor. Let's see if we can do that while we have. Partly because I don't want to buy more paints, and partly because it's good to learn to use what you have available. First thing is to make my mid-tone colour. Here I'm going to mix a dark blue and a medium grey I have. This should hopefully give me the blue tinged grey I mentioned before. With a good looking mid-tone, add some dark grey to the mix, and this will give me my shadow colour. Let's apply the paint to the model. Now we start the painting. I'm just going to apply the colour you saw to all the armour panels. I don't need to be too tidy here as I can clean up any mistakes I make later. This was supposed to be the shadow colour, but I do not think it's dark enough. So I'm going to add more dark grey and go over the darker parts of the model again. We are assuming the light source, perhaps the son of Prospero, is shining down on our wolf boy from the top and the front. This means that any parts that would not be hit from this angle are where I need to focus the darker colour. The next step is to start to bring up the brightness. So let's mix the colour again and leave out the dark grey. I then add this paint to the places where I think the light would hit. Once I've done the first layer, I go back and add another layer with a little bit more grey than dark blue. Then we do this again adding more to the grey to bring the colour up that tiny bit brighter. The biggest thing to keep in mind here is where the light will be coming from. If something is under shadow, when I look at the model, then it does not deserve the brighter paint. The final part before we move on to something other than the armour is to paint almost to the edges with only the grey colour and a teeny tiny little bit of the blue. Nothing else to darken now. Each time I apply a new layer, I'm trying to let the previous layer show, which is not easy on a model this busy. I'm pretty happy with the armour looking like this, so now I can move away from the grey and get stuck into the bane of many a mini painter's life. Golden Trim. The sculptor of this mini, 3D art guy, patron link in the description of the video, did a fantastic job on all the details. But this means I need to do those details justice, and Lehman Russ has a lot of bling. I am painting on the gold here with a darkish brown. This will be my base colour for all the gold. 
it will give me shadows and allow better coverage of the metallic paint coming next. Speaking of metallics but moving away from the gold, I paint all of the mechanical bits and blades with a gum metal or silver colour. Nothing special here, we just want to get all of the metallic parts done as neatly as possible. Let's get some more base coats down before we switch up the piece and apply our shadow colour for the wolf pelts. I plan to go with a white style wolf pelt so we'll use a dark grey base coat. Again just trying to be neat here and getting an even coverage. As I was looking at the piece I decided to put an almost edge highlight onto the armour using just the flat grey colour. This gets the armour to where I'm happy with for the moment. With all that done we can see our boy. He isn't finished by a long way but the start is there. Now let's get more creative. Hopping back to our reference image we can see that Prospero, the place our piece is taking place, has these majestic pyramids. And the theme of the Thousand Sons, owner of this world, is Egyptian. So we're going to make a pyramid blimp for Lehman to be astride. You can already see here that I've made a quick pyramid with a flat top for Lehman to stand upon. Next we want to jazz this up a bit. So let's add a scarab motif to the top of the pyramid. For all this work I'm using Fusion 360 and some basic extrude or cut tools. I pull the scarab image into Publisher, make it into an SVG file and then I can import this into Fusion to be extruded to or as in this case to cut into the shape of the top of our pyramid. This is supposed to look like a place, maybe in a plaza that Lehman Russ has just cleared of enemies. So I add this flagstone pattern in the same way as I did the scarab, and it gives us a nice ground effect. It's not perfect, but I think this is starting to look very good. With that done, let's add some more details. Here we can see that the pyramids have what perhaps are elevator platforms in the middle of their sides, and there are also windows with lights showing. Let's do a quick montage of adding those onto our model. The last piece of our puzzle, or of our pyramid, are these statues that are along each of the four corners. I had a plan for these later, but for now I need to make a place where our statues can stand. Here again you can see me make a platform style shape and then extrude it so that it pokes out of the pyramid's main body. I'm pretty happy with this, so let's pray to the 3D printing gods and turn it from digital file to physical object. Cue the music. Let's get back to painting the big man. We're going to do a gold coat for all of his filigree. I have a nice warm gold paint, but I want to tone it down for our first highlight layer. I add dark grey to the mix, which creates a much cooler and more subdued gold. This then gets added to the brown parts, trying to leave the dark brown in any more shadowy areas. Here you can see the gold work done. Brings the model a bit closer to the reference image. Now I run some black shade over all the silver metal areas. Nothing special, just need something to dole down the pure metallic. Once that has been done to all the metal, I decided it's time to throw in the towel in my battle against sanity and try to recess shade all of the runes in his armour. This worked okay, with a more subtle effect than I would have liked for the time that it took. It is just a case of a tiny bit of shade on the brush and a very careful hand. Now it's time for more recess shading, trying to get an even darker tone in certain areas of the armor panels. This step requires more care than I would like, and so takes a fair chunk of time. 
However, we are always trying to push that contrast, so it's worth it. With that done, let's start on some fun dry brushing of the cloak. Here I start with a medium grey. We're hoping to bring this up to a near white in the end, but for now it's just a simple dry brush trying to hit the areas of the fur that would not be in shadow. Once the first coat is done, it's time to add another. Here, a medium grey with some light grey added into the mix. I have to be extra careful dry brushing the fur near the back of his head and the power pack, as the technique can be messy and I don't want it spilling onto other parts than the fur. Following my dry brush, I get some almost white and do some tiny edge highlights on the fur, hoping to make the fur read much more like white and bring more contrast between it and the armor. I would have preferred an even whiter look to the fur, but such is the way with a process like this. I will know for next time to start lighter. With the fur looking mostly how I want it, it is time to start on some of the smaller details. Here I paint the ropes with a ropish light brown. Next I paint the skulls and the bone parts with a darkish brown. This will be the base coat and shadow colour for these parts later on. The next quick detail is adding some metal back to the chains on our fur areas. One coat of metal and we are done for now. These details were always going to need to be completed after the dry brush. If we did them before, they would have gone messy when we did the dry brush itself. Just like the metal, I need to do these handles for the weapons. One coat of dark red, and we can move on. With most of the details base coated, let's get on to some highlights. First, I want to hit all the armor again. Because it is a miniature, we need to push the highlights and shadows beyond what will be normal. That's the idea anyway. I take a mix of the medium grey I last used with some light grey, leaning more towards the lighter side, and I go over all the edges where the light would hit. Moving the model on my brush to get an angle where possible, or, as is most often, praying to the gods and trying to paint a straight line along an edge. This won't be the final highlight, but it is bringing us ever closer to completion. The same thing needs to happen to our gold. The warm gold paint I have is still too warm on its own, so I add some of the blue used for the armor at the beginning and make it a bit cooler. This was then added on all the edges of the armor. The second biggest bane of the mini painter's life, following golden trim, is highlighting golden trim. Still, it must be done. Next on the list are the ropes. As you might have noticed by now, there's no real order on how I do these things. Once the base color is done anyway. For the ropes, we're going to mix some bone with their base color and then do very thin lines. There are lines on the model here, but they are so tiny it is beyond my ability to follow them, and likely too hard to see with the eye anyway. The lines are there to give us some texture and make them look like they really are ropes. With that done, I add red to the handles. This is an area I'm really trying to emphasize, but the red does contrast a lot with the rest of the model. Here we add bone to the base colour and add it to the highest areas. Now we go back to the bone. Here we mix the base colour with what? You guessed it. Bone. At least in the case of these bits I do want them to read as bone when completed. The details are getting smaller, so being able to do blends is harder. It's just important to leave some of the lower brown colour showing in some places to give the idea of shadows. Now more bone gets added to the red and then we go over the highest areas once more. Since the places under the hand have no highlights, it should give us the effect we want, and it makes his weapons look more regal. This next step is an interesting one, for the reason that I believe it wasn't really needed. I mixed the base gold colour with some silver, then I went to highlight all the gold areas, and I cannot see any difference. I keep going and do the whole model anyway. I think this is a lesson that with such a busy model on this scale, each individual layer needs to have a visible effect, otherwise it's not really worth the time it takes. Maybe you think differently. Let me know in the comments if you think it shows up. After that we do more bone. We do this by adding bone to the, to, to the bone colour. Bone. On a serious note, we have a small amount of dark brown mixed with a much greater proportion of off-white <coughs> bone colour and we layer it on, again trying to leave some of the previous coat there. Let's stop and take stock. I'm getting very happy with where we are with this guy. We need to do something with the silver metallics, as right now they're a bit basic. Also, most of the rest of the model needs at least one more highlight before we finally complete his face. The most important part of the piece. However, we're in a good place, so let's do a switch up and work on the plinth. Here we can see the plinth with a layer of spray primer on it, a step I should have waited to do because of what I'm about to add. A piece like this needs some cool words, so I created this in Fusion 360 and printed it on my Elgu Mars Pro. Two. I wanted to get better detail on this and so I didn't want to use the FDM printer. Remember I said about those statues on the side of the pyramid? Here they are. These are some epic scale space marines that I 3D printed. They should be added to the stands, but first, this one must die! I cut one in half as I wanted to show that the statues are breaking in the fight going on around the pyramid. 
Then I glue the plaque into the recess made for it and glue the teeny tiny space marines, even the half dead one, to the plimps for them on the corners of the pyramid. Since I am an idiot, I forgot to print the right number of epic marines. So I covered this up by adding small cork boulders to represent some even more deteriorated statues. Now let's make this plinth look even more battered. I drill some holes into the plinth with a modeling drill, trying to emulate bullet holes. Then I take a file and attempt to expand the areas around those holes I made. Then I take a hobby knife and try harder. But I also take the blade and cut some scratches into the size and top of the pyramid. A quick spray off camera and we can finally get paint on this guy. Starting off, I paint all the bits that will be gold with a dark brown. This is the same as I used on the gold of Lehman Russ himself. Here it looks a bit brighter though, because of the cream undercoat. I paint this on the elevator things on the side of the pyramid, the statues on plimps and the scarab icon on the top. With all the brown done, I start to work on the off-white. This is a poor recipe and I made mistakes when I started this. My main mistake was not thinking about this beforehand. Here you can see me painting a very, very thin light grey paint over the bone undercoat. This took more coats than I want to admit. That coat is finally done, and I realise another mistake. I need to paint the recesses in the cobblestones a darker colour, but I am already starting too light, and I have already done the brown. What follows is a very messy attempt at a darker grey to the recesses of the cobblestone. Darkish grey done kinda, and we can add a very thin light grey to the top parts of the flagstone. Now we add some highlight to the grey. Here I mix my base tone with an almost white grey, just a tiny bit and then I start to layer. The sides of the plinth do not have much depth, so I'm leaving the slightly darker grey in places where I think it will provide the illusion of depth best. Around the little windows, near the base of the statues, places like this. Oh and the bullet holes too. Going back to the golden portions, I use a bronzy gold, Balfasar gold by GW. I'm not sure I can just describe this paint. This goes over all the brown areas, but I leave the areas that I want to be in shadow in that darker brown, similar to what I've done previously. You can now see all the gold done, and I think we're getting close to our reference image. I give a black wash to the statues to boost the shadows on them, and then try to carefully add the same wash to the scarab. Here I only want to add the wash to the edges between the gold and the grey sides. Speaking of the grey bits, I add the same wash to the dark grey cobblestone recesses. I felt that they were not dark enough with just the flat paint. Perhaps a darker grey should have been used here. Wash is done, let's do some highlighting. Here I am using pure white grey paint to hit all of the edges. The light source for the plinth will be coming from the front of the model, just like it was on Lehman, so I don't worry about the back of the pyramid. Highlights need to be added to the statues too. I just use a silver paint here, just going over the edges of all the golden parts with very small touches of the paint. I'm very happy of where we are, but some more weathering needs to be done. From a local craft store I have this little sponge on a stick, let's give it a try. The sponge gives an irregular pattern to the paint it applies, making for a much more natural distressing to the mini. I use dark grey here, then follow up with some brown as you can see. Finally I use my stick sponge to apply a very very small bit of silver, almost to make it seem like the metal structure of the building is starting to show through with the damage. Let's spin the pyramid and see where we are. I'm pretty happy with this, it's not 100% recreation, but it was never meant to be. It looks like the intention to me. What do you think? The words need some paint, but I don't know what I would do with them. Maybe we leave that for the final reveal? Surely by then I would have thought of something. Anyway, back to Lehman of the Russ. We cannot leave him without paint. Let's do the final highlight on the grey armour and we can call that part done. I take my light grey paint and apply this to the very edges of the armour. Every place I think will be brightest with the light hitting it. This is great for the rivets and the spiky edges. This step should push the shadows and the highlights to the greatest contrast we can get. Next is time to finish the metal. I use the paint that was applied for the base tone and mix it with some aluminium paint. As per before, just trying to leave the shaded metal in the places where I really don't think the light would hit. I must sound like a broken record, and this is only video 1. With that step done, I take pure aluminium paint and go even closer to the edges of the metal areas. If we take a look at that sword, it's not good enough. That old contrast that I don't stop mentioning is just not good enough here. So I take some black shade and add it to the fuller of the blade. 
Also, I add some bits to the rooms of the blade. This area is pointing down, so we won't add much more brighter colour here, but we want to push the darker bits so we can at least see them. To finish off the silver, I take the brightest silver I have and hit only the very edges. At this point, we really need to be only adding a small amount and do it as neatly as I possibly can. The final highlight has been done for the silver and the grey, so let's do it for the gold. I chose to use the same silver colour I used on the other metallics, trying to use even less of the silver to really just get the brightest bits. Back to the bone, people. I take the bone colour straight and add to the highlights of the skulls, teeth and other bone parts. I also forgot the tubes on the axe, so I give this a quick dark grey colour. Now we are on to a big bit, the face and hair of Lehman Russ. This is scary to me. I've painted humans or humanish faces before, but it's normally an afterthought, or I try to give everything a helmet. You can see I have prepared my paints, and I've watched some other videos, so let's try this and see what happens. I start with a ruddy skin tone. This will be my darkest shadow if the plan holds. I use thin coats to be extra careful not to obscure any of the details. It is at this point that I notice a slight issue with the right eye in the print. We will just have to keep going, it's a bit too late to turn back. With the face base done, I want to base the hair. Lehman is blonde, but blonde is not yellow, more a extra light golden brown. So I base coat with one of the lightest browns I have. I have to be very neat at this point, as the rest of the model is complete and I really don't want to have to clean any slip ups. Back to the skin, I mix the ruddy skin tone I have with that of a Caucasian mid-tone. This first attempt is only a very slight variation, just a touch of the lighter colour. I once again try to hit only the highlights and details of the face. Once the first highlight is done, add more of the lighter colour and go again, hitting the edges once more. Like I said before, it's very hard to get all the details where there are so many so close together. After a few coats of slowly adding more of my mid-tone, I finally add a mix of my mid-tone and my final highlight together, again another brighter Caucasian colour. These highlights are not the easiest to see, and I'm not sure each effect is doing what I want. With the highlights done, I want to give some colour to the cheeks. I add a very, very thin down purple wash to the cheek areas. Again, not sure it does what I want it to. Before we do the eyes, and I lose my mind, it's hair time. As I use the light brown for the base, I will use this to start my highlights. I want to move this more towards golden, as we are going brighter, so I mix the light brown with an ochre colour and also an off-white. Then we paint that on. Then I add more off-white and apply another highlight. I'm kinda trying to hit the individual hairs in the sculpt, but also not being too precious about it. Specific strands will be too small for me to paint, so I add thin lines to all the edges and for any areas that are flatter I just try and make one even coat. At some point in this process I also add some extra ochre with the off-white so I can keep going up with a slightly golden tinge. Now the teeth. I use a bone colour and once again pray to those gods. It's a very religious painting video. It's good this model has teeth sculpted on, otherwise I would be completely lost. Eye time. I use an almost white grey and paint the whole of the eye. Here I have to be super neat. With the white added, I had to go google what colour Lehman Russ's eyes even were. Turns out they're a yellow to give him more wolf vibes. Not sure he needs more wolf vibes, but there we go. I tried to do a very small yellow dot inside of the white, small enough to not obscure the white but big enough so that we can see it after I do the black pupil. Now I use pure black to paint the pupil and my latest statement is proven false as the yellow is almost completely obscured. Still, small black dots and it looks almost like decent eyes. Now it is time for the final reveal. With the spins done of the final piece, here are some images. 
I went with a flame idea for the writing, as Lehman here is burning Prospero down. I'm pretty happy of where we got to, but I know there are ways I can improve, such as the face and much better blending. Stay tuned to see if I can finally do eyes properly. If you want to check out anything else that we do, you can find it all, including ways to support us at castlepaint.com. Thanks for watching.